All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Son of Ola. Let's fucking go. Oh. Yes! Hello! What's up? Welcome everyone, Sun Wolf Ola 155, holy shit! I'm actually extremely excited for today, not only did I prepare everything so the Edelkron is working, the TV is on and you know everything's working fine, the levels look freaking amazing today on the audio line right there. The reason why I'm happy is because uh, I'm gonna explain it very very short. So uh, maybe if you've seen Sunday with Ola, you might have heard me that I'm complaining about a bad back and like oh, old guy Ola and, and uh, shit like that. It's been like that. I've had a bad back and a bad hip since uh, January this year. Uh, basically from weightlifting and it just didn't stop hurting. I went through this whole year just having pain here and there and sometimes even to the point where I can't even work like a full day. I have to go home because it's hurting. And then I went to a doctor a couple weeks back and it turned out it's a herniated disc. Uh, so uh, I got painkillers now and I'm on meds and I feel great. You know, while all of this is healing up. So that's why I'm happy. I feel great. I'm doing drugs. I'm high as no, I'm not high as f it, it's, it's just pain relief, basically. I still feel it, okay? It means that I have a lot more energy. I'm very happy. I can go a full day of working without having to, you know, f***ing go home or something like that. So, very happy about that. I haven't talked too much about this because I don't think it really matters to you guys if I have a uh, hip pain or whatnot. But it's, maybe it's good to understand, you know, that I go through things too here and there. So hopefully it will uh, heal up really soon. So I'm back 100% don't have to take any meds and shit like that. So that's exciting. Another thing that's extremely exciting is that you might have seen the new Sola guitars Svart guitars. I don't have any one of them right here, but I've done videos. We've actually shipped a fair bit of them back to Spain. But as you might have seen, we're launching the Svart series, which is a completely blacked out solar guitar. It's available in our one series now. So this past week we launched the X 1.6 Svart and the T 1.6 Svart and the E 1.6 Svart. We launched that today. So three new Svart guitars uh, that are available right now from solarguitars.com. They're as brutal as it gets. Svart is black. Also, I have to thank you guys for the incredible support that you guys have given me uh, throughout the years, obviously. But uh, I was uh, thinking in regards to the Chug Project album number two. First single came out past past Friday. This Friday, I released another song, Anger Management. I hope you enjoy it. The album will be out October 25th on Spotify and all streaming platforms. And we also have these guitarist and ultimate edition bundles that you can get from oldenglandshop.com. You can pre-order them right now. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys freaking rule, okay? Remember that. All right, have we talked enough already? Yes, let's go. The news. Ozzy Osbourne on his upcoming surgery. I can't do it anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. I, I can't. I can't. Tomorrow I have my final surgery on my neck, said Osbourne, which is going to be the final surgery because I can't do it anymore. Regardless of the way it ends up after tomorrow, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't. So basically he's just not doing any more surgery after this, this neck surgery that he's doing. He's probably just sick and tired of 
being in surgery I mean, it's not easy He later added on his overall health and the upcoming operation It's just like going over a freaking haircut now But I have improved somewhat, I think My feet feel like I got bricks tied to them when I'm walking I walked upstairs today and downstairs for the first time in a while And my feet feel like I've got diving boots on when I'm walking I think it's the nerves That dude don't mess with the nerves, man. That's what I have a problem with. It's the sciatic nerve, man. It's success. I think the question that everyone is asking is, will we ever see Ozzy out on a stage ever again? I, I think the chances are very, very slim. I really hope he gets better with this new neck surgery and that maybe he can come back and play his last shows at least. I mean, he canceled all the European shows this year. I had tickets for the Stockholm one. It got canceled and everyone... We just... We just have to wait and see. It's incredibly tragic, I would say. Spotify finds another way to bleed artists dry. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. I saw this and it actually pissed me off a little bit. Spotify had just rolled out their brand new showcase feature in the event you'd like to make uh, the CEO even richer. Spotify's showcase feature charges artists to promote their music as a paid banner advertisement at the top of Spotify's home to what they're calling likely listeners across Spotify. So basically, Spotify is becoming a platform where you can pay to win. It's a, it's a social media platform by this point. Just saying, it's just that it's based on music. So how is this bleeding artist dry? Because getting your music featured on Showcase starts at 100 bucks and it's priced on a cost per click basis starting at 40 cents. So one click on a music cost you 40 cent and you will make roughly uh, 0.5 cents in royalties. <laughs> Holy shit. My only hope is that Spotify doesn't feed me shit that I don't want to listen to and uh, that, you know, they genuinely recommend me stuff that I would like to listen to. So there's an algorithm to everything, just like on YouTube, for instance. Like, okay, I'll listen to Cryptosy, which uh, the album I will talk about later today. If I want to be recommended anything, it will be, you know, based on what I'm listening to, right? So I don't want to be promoted stuff that I don't listen to. As an artist, you know, I'm not going to pay Spotify to feature my music. I already do, you know? It's a, I'm, my music is on there. My time that I put into music, it's basically out there for free right now. Now I have to pay to make people listen to my music? No. <laughs> that. I guess labels and all that have a lot of money. Good for them, I guess, to uh, be able to control the front page of Spotify. It's smart by Spotify, but is it good? No, I don't think so. Dave Mustaine weighs in on the first time he saw James Hetfield play guitar. How can you possibly be satisfied being a singer when you play like that? The Megadeth man has said that Hetfield kept his talent hidden and that witnessing him play for the first time was kind of shocking. At that time in their careers, Mustaine says the burgeoning thrash icons were still finding their feet with Hetfield preferring to take on vocal duties and leave his electric guitar at home. As such, the band were hosting auditions for a rhythm guitarist but had struggled to find a good fit. Meanwhile, Mustaine says he wasn't pushing himself as a guitarist either. I was kind of playing at Lars Ulrich level because Lars was still learning to play drums back then so by watching Yates play guitar for the first time was kind of shocking because I didn't know he knew how to play guitar so I mean they were all young at this stage so this is not a burn at all I was kind of playing at Lars Ulrich's level you know they, they were still learning their instruments it was early in their career man but it seems that James Hetfield was always good at rhythm guitar he was born into it man Mustaine says Hetfield's move to rhythm duties was born more out of a lack of options rather than any need uh, for Hetfield to prove himself we just got fed up one day of auditioning guitar players just like I did with singers says Mustaine and he picked up this guitar and started playing and then inside I'm going get the f*** out of here how can you possibly be satisfied being a singer when you play like that why not be both i always thought he was a really talented guitar so very cool a little insight on the early days of metallica and uh, mustard mustaine pod teases new single with lamb of gods randy blythe pod man i i can't say i've been been in touch with the new metal scene at all <laughs> for the past 20 years maybe but has pod released anything since whenever I don't know. Anyways, they're releasing a new single featuring the Lamb of God singer. And it's probably... At this time, when you're watching this, the single will probably be out. But let me listen to the teaser at least. Dude. Promising, I must say. I think it's kind of interesting now that we're seeing kind of like a, a revival of new metal 
and the albums that are coming out now, their productions are just so much more mainstream and more, you know... I would just say mainstream. That's just more streamlined than it were back in the day. You know, back during the 90s and the early 2000s, all the albums had different sounds and, uh, you know, that's what I liked about the 90s. You heard like Sepultura, you knew immediately, okay, the sound of Sepultura, that's Sepultura for sure. Then Machine Head had their own sound, Pantera had their own sound and whatnot. And that's what kind of differentiated the bands during that day. Like Obituary, for instance, had their own sound. And it was so cool. And nowadays, everyone starts to sound a little bit the same because, you know, basically everyone is kind of catching the mainstream production in that sense. But I would imagine that new metal bands would be perfect for the modern day mainstream type of production. So I'm going to catch up a little bit on my new metal knowledge and watch this little list. 10 greatest new metal track music videos. And let's see if uh, it's something I remember or if it's uh, something I care about or if it's uh, whatever. Corn though, Freak on a Leash. I mean, come on. In this video is badass, by the way. Is it uh, uh, Todd McFarlane? Todd McFarlane is the guy who did the, the Spawn uh, shit. So, uh, he made this video, incredible video, and this album was insane, by the way. And Korn, obviously, is one of the few that really, really stood out in the new metal scene, in my opinion. Who did I listen to? Who were the first ones? Probably Korn, Deftones, uh, Limp Bizkit, uh, who else? And then, you know, kind of like the mainstream ones that really made it big came along, like P.O.D. and Linkin Park and all of that. Uh, Korn, uh, absolutely. Mudvayne, I never listened to Mudvayne, except this song. When is this song from, actually? Burber dang, burber dang, eat my poo, eat my shit, lick my balls, dee 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 dee. It's a good song, man. It's a good riff. Break stuff, dude! This is probably one of the first albums, new metal albums, where the production was spot on, in my opinion, because the guitar tone is metal as f You can say whatever you want about Limp Bizkit. I dug this album a lot. It's, it's a great album. It's a banger. I mean, Wes Borland, he's a highly underrated guitar player, in my opinion. Power Man, okay. I didn't necessarily listen to Power Man either, but they did open up for Pantera when I saw them live in 2000-something. I think I remember this. <laughs> System of Down, okay. The band that was the entryway band for people to start listening to metal. I didn't listen to System of a Down, but I know a lot of my metal listening friends listen to System of a Down. That was the gateway band to metal. So we have a lot to thank for to System of a Down. Slipknot, oh shit. Slipknot? Yeah, I guess this song was a little bit new metal. But in my opinion, Slipknot were one of the bands that kind of broke through the new metal thing and made things brutal again. Yes, they were a little bit new metal, but they were way more uh, aggressive, way more brutal than everyone else. And I remember hearing uh, the first album uh, back when it came out in 1999 or first, the, the uh, what's it, what's it called? But I heard the Eyeless for the first time, I'm like, what the f***? This is amazing. And I heard like, these guys are gonna take over the world. And they did. How about that? Static X, okay. Linkin Park, okay. P.O.D., there you go. So, uh, dope. Okay, I'm not too familiar with these bands, to be honest. I just wasn't really in the loop with uh, these type of new metal bands, but I did enjoy Deftones. Why, is, why, isn't, why isn't Deftones on this list, man? That's my question. But Korn, Deftones, a little bit of Limp Bizkit, Slipknot, obviously. That, that was like my new metal jam back in the day. Holy shit. And that was me derailing a little bit. How do you like that? Dead news. Album tip of the week. Let's go. Okay, so I'm listening to the new Cryptosy album. Holy shit, or Cryptopsy or whatever people say. I think it's Cryptosy, isn't it? The album is called Ask Gomorrah Burns and it was released uh, this past week and it's pretty freaking good. I'm a long time Cryptosy fan, okay? Non so vile. Holy shit, such a good album. But I did actually enjoy the other albums as well that didn't feature Lord Worm. Lord Worm was their original singer. Uh, that made Nuns of Isle so great. Uh, but then they got uh, Mike DeSalvo, who did Whispers of Primacy, and uh, what's the other album? Let me see what it is. And Daniel Begg. Yeah, 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 yeah. I listened to those albums a lot, and then I kind of like, uh, you know, lost track a little bit about uh, what Cryptosy was doing. They did come to Sweden and played a show, so I went to watch them then. But basically, right now, I think Flo Monnier, the drummer, who's amazing, by the way, 
is the only guy left in the band that's kind of like an original member. I'm not even sure he's an original, original member. Yeah, he's not even... None of the original members are, are, uh, are in the band anymore. But since 1992, Flo Monnier, uh, the drummer, has been in the band and, you know, basically that's it. But with that said, okay, you know, it's still a pretty banging album, I must say. I've thoroughly enjoyed this album. I highly recommend you go checking out Cryptosy as Gomorra Burns, okay? Great Canadian death metal band. What? Another adventures with Ola? How is this man possible? With all his ideas and uh, good content. Oh shit, look at this. This is uh, a drawing that uh, my daughter did for me. It's a rainbow. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's her cafe. Cool. Anyways, I'm gonna do an unboxing of this. And uh, you might see this and like, what, what the hell is this? Is that a vinyl? Yes, it is a vinyl. It's a vinyl from Stephen Rodborn in UK. And he's been trying to send me this vinyl for quite some time. He sent it, it got shipped back to him and back and forth and back and forth. So this vinyl has been all over uh, everyone's hands. You know, it's finally here though. So thank you so much, Stephen. It's been so long. I don't even remember what it was, <laughs> you know? And I've said this before in regards to vinyls is that I know I can be a collector of vinyls if I wanted to, but I'm purposely staying away from buying vinyls because I know it will become a problem. It's just like outboard gear, you know, for being a, you know, outboard gear for producing, for instance. If I venture into that world, all is gonna be lost. All the money is gonna be lost. And the same with vinyls. So my limit is that I can only buy one vinyl myself every year. And usually that is my favorite album from uh, for that year, basically. But gifting me vinyls, that's a completely separate thing. So here it is. What? Oh shit, what? No fucking way. projects in the jungle everyone it's Pantera is this an original printing I think it is it's not a new one at least look at that yeah yeah this has to be original correct me if I'm wrong Steven but I think it's an original it's one of the glam Terra vinyls man holy shit projects in the jungle record and mix the Pantego sound studios look at that picture of Dimebag right there <laughs> holy shit and Vinny obviously Rex Rocker right there. All right. Hell yeah, man. Mel Magic Records. Let's go. 1984. Dude, we're putting this on right now. Holy shit. <sighs> shit, yeah. Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh shit, it's... Damn. The vinyl is warped on one end. Maybe it's a shipping damage. All right, let's just give it a shot. Hopefully it'll still work. Come on, baby. Yeah, man. Holy shit. Look at that little warp right there. But it's not too bad. I can't actually hear it, so that's cool. Here we go, dime bag, baby. How old was he here? Probably like 20 years old or 19 years old. Holy shit, man. Dude, Steven, thank you so much, man. That makes me so happy. I'm gonna try and put this vinyl on the wall uh, where it belongs, man. Thank you so much for that. And that's another adventure with Ola for you right there. Ah. All right.
my little penis friends, that has to be it for Son of a Fall 155. During this premiere, are you watching the premiere right now? Who won the t-shirt? Oh, I have no idea. I'm actually in Germany right now when this premiere is happening right now. I'm waking up at a hotel in Germany. I've been at the Guitar Summit uh, show or exhibition uh, this past uh, yesterday on the Saturday. And uh, I'll do a little vlog from that. So that might be what you are going to see. Uh, in the next week or something like that. Probably in Adventures with Ola, next Sunday with Ola. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. And also, if you want to support what we're doing, you can pre-order the uh, Chug Project album number two up here. And you can listen to the new song on Spotify and all streaming platforms. It's called Anger Management. There's also Live and You since last week. A couple of, you know, teasers for the album to come. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Hope you have a great... Uh, hope you have a great Sunday. Goodbye.